What up, friends? Erica here. Today I am coming to you with a weekend reading vlog, so stay tuned. Look at these shelves. Aren't they neat? Wouldn't you think my collection's complete? Wouldn't you think I'm the one? The one who has all the books on these shelves. Adventures are told. How many adventures can one shelf hold? Looking around, do you think? Sure. I've got all the books. Okay, so it's Saturday. It's almost 11 o'clock at night. Um, so I'm definitely not gonna get any reading done, but uh, I do have a book haul for you. <laughs> Yes, I know. I was supposed to go on a book buying ban, but you love me anyway, right? I mean, that's what this channel is about. It's about reading books and hauling books and unhauling books that you hate and, you know, books. It's about books. So, um, I actually went to Walmart first, but, um, the one I'm most excited about I want to get to, you know, save the best for last kind of sort of ordeal. So I will get to that in a minute. But I also went to um, Dollar Tree and I just grabbed a bunch of books. I didn't even read the synopses. Hi, buddy. Anyway, this first one is called The Reunion. By Galami Muso, I probably butcher that, but that's okay. Um, one freezing night, as her campus is paralyzed by a snowstorm, 19-year-old Vin Vinka Rockwell, the most beautiful and glamorous, glamorous girl at her prep school, runs away with her philosophy teacher, with whom she has been conducting a secret affair. She will never be seen again. So that's what happened like 25 years ago. So that's what it's going to start out as 25 years ago. And then that goes to the present day. It's And um, it says once inseparable Thomas Max, Maxim or Maxim and Fanny, Vinka's best friends, have not spoken since graduation. But when they receive a notice from their old school, detailing plans for a new gymnasium and inviting them to attend a class reunion. Excuse me, I am sick, so my voice is going to go in and out, so I apologize in advance. They know they must go back one more time, because there is a body buried in the gym's walls, and they're the ones who put it there. What really happened that long ago winter night? Now nothing stands in the way of the truth. So... It, it sounds like a uh, mystery thriller type of ordeal, so I'm I'm intrigued. I, I'm glad I picked this one up. The next one is called Happily and Madly by Alexis Bass. Or Bass. Bass, Bass. Could be either or because a bass is like a fish is, is, is spelled that way and a and a bass, like the kind that you play, is spelled that way. So, anyway, I do kind of like the cover. So, and it says right here, every lie has a price. So, this is probably going to be good too. Maris Brown has been told two things about her destiny. One, she will fall happily and madly in love. Two, she could be dead before she turns 18. Damn! The summer before that fateful birthday, Maris is in the wealthy beach town of Cross Cove with her estranged father and his new family and the infamous Duvalls. Since the youngest member of the Duvall family, Edison, is back from college and back in the arms of Maris's new step stepsister, her summer looks to be a long string of lazy days on the Duvalls' lush beach. But Edison is hiding something, and the more Mar Mar 
Morris, maybe, uh, learns about him, the more signs that she is given that she should stay as far away from him as possible. Yet, as wrong as it is, Morris is drawn to him. Around Edison, she feels truly alive, and she is not willing to give that up, even if it means a collision course with destiny. So that sounds pretty good. Next is called A Room Called Earth by Madeline Ryan. And this one says, As a full moon rises over Melbourne, Australia, a young woman gets ready for a party. She is autistic, yet within her mind she is whoever she wants to be. And what appears to be an ordinary night out is, through the prism of her singular perspective, extraordinary. As the evening unfolds, each encounter reveals the vast discrepancies between what she is thinking and feeling and what she is able to say, and there's so much she'd like to say. So when she meets a man and a genuine connection occurs, it's nothing short of a miracle. However, it isn't until she invites him home that we come to appreciate the humanity beneath the labels we cling to, and we grasp the pleasure of what it means to be alive. Huh. And it's her debut novel, so we'll see what I think about it. And mind you, these were all a dollar twenty-five a piece. So next is called Cursed. Um, it's illustrated by Frank Miller and written by Thomas Wheeler, and it's actually now a Netflix original series. And this cover is badass. You ready? Isn't that awesome? That's awesome. The end pages. Isn't that cool? The front. So this is really cool. This is really cool. So it is a novel, but um, it's got these illustrations in them. So anyway, let's see what this thing is about, shall we? The time for kings is over. The sword has chosen a queen. Nimue grew up an outcast. I can relate. Her connection to dark magic made her something to be feared in her druid village, and that made her desperate to leave. This is until red pal pal paladins slaughter her entire village, and Nimue's fate is forever altered. Charged by her dying mother to reunite an ancient sword with a legendary sorcerer, Nimue is now her people's only hope. Her mission leaves little room for revenge, but the growing power within her can think of nothing else. Nimue teams up with a charming mercenary named Arthur and refugee Fay Folk. She wields a sword meant for the one true king. She battles to unite her people, avenge her family, and discover the truth about her destiny. And perhaps the one thing that can change destiny itself is found at the edge of a blade. So that sounds decent. I'm intrigued. So, there's that. Next, I got one called Bright Star by Erin Swan. See what the naked, no, the naked cover is just black. Um, it says a traumatic experience in Andra's childhood has left her mute and subdued, a servant in the chief judge's manner. But when an assassination team led by the secretive and alluring Kale infiltrates the manor and makes a quick escape, she takes her chance and flees with them. Aunt Andra is thrust into the ranks of a secret rebellion, a group of outcasts and believers seeking to overthrow the chief judge and replace the corrupt government with new members, ones who will restore and preserve the land they love. Now the girl who was once the, an outcast must somehow become the leader Parolia needs. 
but she is stronger than she believes and with the help of a fiercely loyal dragon she may just be the one to lead them all to victory and it's her debut novel as well so we'll see where it, it sounds it sounds okay next is called let's call it doomsday by katie henry I wonder if she's related to Emily. No, I'm just kidding. Or me. So it says, There could be a fire, a catastrophic flood, a super eruption that spews lakes of lava. Alice Kimball has made note of all possible scenarios, and she is prepared for each one. What she doesn't expect is meeting Hannah Marks in her therapist's waiting room. Hannah calls their meeting fate. After all, Ellis is scared about the end of the world. Hannah knows when it's going to happen. Despite Ellis's anxiety about what others think of her, about what she's, go what she's doing wrong, about the safety of her loved ones, the two girls become fast friends. As Ellis tries to help Hannah decipher the details of her doomsday premonition, she learns there are secrets Hannah isn't telling her. But with time ticking down, the search for answers only raises more questions. What does it? When does it happen? Who will believe them? How do you prepare for the end of the world when it feels like your life is just getting started? So, it sounds decent. I don't really care for the cover though. Looks retarded. <laughs> Next is a book called The Winter Station by Jody Shields. I was trying to take off this stupid sticker. I hate it when people put stickers on. Drives me crazy. Drives me crazy. <laughs> Come on, baby. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What the fuck? Oh. Well, I got majority of it off. Like I said, this one's called The Winter Station by Jody Shields. And it says, 1910. People are mysteriously dying at an alarming rate in the Russian-ruled city of Carbon, a major railway outpost in northern China. Strangely, some of the dead bodies vanish before they can be identified. During a dangerously cold winter in a city gripped by fear, the Baron, a wealthy Russian aristocrat, and the city's medical commissioner is determined to stop this mysterious plague battling local customs and occupying army <clears throat> in a brutal epidemic with no name the baron is torn between duty and compassion between western medical science and respect for chinese tradition and it's actually based on a true story so cute next i've heard a lot of people talking about this book and they rave about it like in a good sense like they say it's really good so I don't I'm not sure if I'm gonna like it or not because it's actually a play and I'm not really much for plays but it's called Much Ado About Nothing um, featuring an, an introduction by Josh Wedden and the full screenplay so, we shall see what I think. It says, Joss Wedden's, Wedden's film adaptation of Shakespeare's classic comedy of friendship, hatred, power, deception, ultimately love, has been acclaimed as a masterpiece and features an all-star cast familiar from Wedden's previous TV series and films, including Simba. Stop. You name <sighs> never mind. I can never So I have two more books that I got from um Dollar Tree. This one's called Scammed by Kristen Simmons. I don't really like the cover. I mean it's just what's interesting about it. Nothing. It's just three people on the cover, but whatever. 
Bryn Hilder is living a life she never dreamed possible. She lives in a mansion getting a top-rate education at Vell Hall. She has friends and an almost boyfriend. Anything she wants, she can have. The only catch? To stay in this life, she has to help the director of Vell Hall take down the bad guys of Sikawa City by collecting secrets and running cons. Getting everything she wants and fighting evil doesn't seem like such a bad deal. The thing is, she's not so convinced anymore that Dr. Odin is really going after bad people after all. And the friends and almost boyfriend that have made her life so different are all liars and con artists. So can she trust that any of it is real? The stakes are higher, the cons are riskier, and nothing is what you think it is. So, I mean, it sounds okay. But it's, I guess it's apparently the second book in the series. The first one is The Deceivers. So I would need to try and find The Deceivers before I can read this. So. Anyway, last but not least, I got Lake of the Ozarks by Bill Geist. My Surreal Summers in a Vanishing America. <clears throat> this one says, before there was tourism and souvenir ashtrays became kitsch. Kitsch, kitsch, maybe. The Lake of the Ozarks was a Shangri-La for middle-class Midwestern families on vacation, complete with man-made beaches, hillbilly mini-golf, and feathered rubber mo tomahawks. It was there that author Bill Geist spent summers in the 60s working at Arrowhead Lodge, a small resort owned by his bombastic uncle in all areas of the operation from cesspool attendant to bellhop what may have seemed like just a summer job became a transformative era when a cast of eccentric small town characters shaped bill into the man he is today so i guess it's a non-fiction i mean even even though yeah it's a it's a autobiography about bill Christ. Which sounds familiar. I'm trying to remember who Bill Geist is. Anyway, um, we did go to Walmart and I got these cute little Halloween nails that I'm going to try out. See how long I can actually keep them on. They were only $3. So, um, I'm going to put these on probably in the morning. But anyway. And then I got these throat lozenges because my throat is freaking killing me. Virus my ass. Seriously think that I've got laryngitis or bronchitis or whatever other kind of a respiratory infection there is. It's frustrating as hell. Anyway. So, everybody is talking about this. Everybody. Everybody. And I decided I wanted to go ahead and give it a shot. Um, it's really, like I said, it's really popular right now. And I'm a little nervous because I'm not really much into hockey. Um, but <clears throat> we'll see what I think. But anyway, it's... Icebreaker by Hannah Grace. So I have the first one and I have the second one, Wildfire. So I'm excited. I'm sure everybody knows what this is about by now. Um, but it says on the back of the first one, Anastasia Allen has worked her entire life for a shot at Team USA. It looks like everything is going according to plan when she gets a full scholarship to the University of California, Maple Hills, and lands a place on their competitive figure skating team. Nothing will stand in her way, not even the captain of the hockey team, Nate Hawkins. Nate's focus as team captain is on keeping his team on the ice, which is tricky when a facility's mishap means they are forced to share a rink with a figure skating team, including Anastasia, who clearly can't stand him. But when Anastasia's skating partner faces an uncertain future, she may have to look to Nate to take her shot. Sparks fly, but Anastasia isn't worried, because she could never like a hockey player, right? <laughs> so that sounds cute. Anyway, I'm excited.
Um, William got one too, but I'm not going to mention it because it's by she whom must not be named. It's, yeah, I'm not going to show it. Anyway, um, the one that I was really looking forward to, <laughs> because, I mean, I, I'm, I am obsessed, obsessed with the Stalking Jack the Ripper series. So, I'm sure you can guess already what this is going to be. It's a Carrie Maniscalco book. It's her newest one called Throne of the Fallen. I'm so excited. I'd sing, but I can't right now. It would sound terrible because of my voice, but, you know. Anyway. Oh, my God. Isn't it beautiful? Isn't that cover gorgeous? It's gorgeous. Oh. And the end pages. Oh. And this is just, it's just plain on the naked cover. But cha, cha. And there is Car the queen herself, Carrie Maniscalco. I'm excited, you guys. Anyway. Sinner, villain, wicked. The Prince of Envy has never claimed to be a saint, but when a cryptic note arrives, signaling the beginning of a deadly game, he knows it will take more than a hint of sin to win and save his falling demon court. Riddles, <sighs> hex to objects, anonymous players, nothing will stand in his way, though none of his meticulous plans prepare him for her, the frustrating artist who ignites his sin like no other. Virtuous darling liar, the trouble with scoundrels and blackguards and that they have a modicum of honor. A fact Miss Camilla Antonius learns after one des desperate mistake allows Waverly Green's most notorious rake to blackmail her. To avoid a ruinous scandal, Camilla is <coughs> forced to enter a devil's bargain with envy. Little expecting his game will awaken her true nature. Together, Envy and Camilla must embark on a perilous journey through the underworld, <clears throat> from glittering demon courts to the sultry vampire realm and beyond, while trying to avoid the most dangerous trap of all, falling in love. Doesn't that sound good? Anyway. So that's it. That's my haul. Anyway. I'm going to get off of here and probably get ready for bed because I don't feel good. I'm exhausted. My voice is killing me. So, good night, and I will let you know what I read tomorrow. So, later. <laughs> Baba, are you stuck? Catnip again. My oh, baby. What? What? Baby. Go get the catnip. Can't see him anymore, he's but he's rolling around over there. <laughs> So, I'm home. Uh, we went to Native Village and then we went to uh, Walmart and got me some tennis shoes because I needed a pair. Um, because it's, it's, it's not cold today, but it's like 8 in the 80s today, but um, it was cold yesterday. It was like 46 degrees, so I figured it was time to turn in my flip-flops and wear tennis shoes. I'm not happy about that part, but I am happy that summer's almost finally over. Anyway, I know what I'm going to be for Halloween this year. Isn't 
that awesome? And, and I have an outfit to match. Wait for it. Wait for it. Isn't that adorable? I figured I can wear this stuff to dress up for Halloween and for our own Halloween. I will read The Nightmare Before Christmas. So that's my plan for Halloween. I'm excited. So yeah, that's, it's just awesome. It's actually, it's like a nightgown socks but I'm gonna um probably wear some black starch pants underneath it so yeah I'm excited anyway I finished while we were out and about today I finished um book two in the dragons in our mist series by Brian Davis called the candlestone and I'm giving it three stars so now I can move on to the next one, which is Circles of Seven. Circles of Seven. It's kind of a chunker. But it's not that much longer than the other ones, like maybe 30 pages more. It's 434 pages, so I should finish that in a couple of hours, I would think depending on how long the audio is. I think it'll probably take me about three hours to finish it. So, I better get to cracking. But anyway, um, I also got this cute little ring. It was only $9. Well, it was $8.88 plus tax. So, yeah. It's cute. And then I got the movie Elemental. I'm excited. I've heard some good things about it. My best friend Jessie said she watched it and she absolutely loved it. So she says it's kind of like Inside Out. But yeah, so it's kind of like that, but it's not exactly. But it's along like the same lines because, you know, the elements of emotions and everything. But anyway, so I'm excited about that. I think that's everything I got. Except I got these cute little tumblers. They were only 25 cents each. See? How cute. They're cute. So, yeah. Anyway. I'm going to get off here. And get some reading done. And... I think that's it. Oh, and I got some more nail glue so that I... So that I can put these on. So. Because this one is all dried up, so I'm guessing it's empty. Oh, there's still some more in there, but it's all dried up, so I would have to, like, cut it. And I don't know where the scissors are right now. So I got me some more. Anyway. So anyway, I'll get it to you guys later.
Okay, people, so I wanted to update you real quick on my reading since I haven't done that. <laughs> um, yesterday I finished four books and got halfway through another. So I finished the Candlestone, um, Circles of Seven, and Tears of a Dragon, all by Brian Davis. I finished the series, so yay! I finished a series! <laughs> Even though I'm in the middle of like hundreds of series. Anyway, and I gave them all three stars. And then I finished, um, I know this is not actually on my October TBR, but you know me, I'm a mood reader and I just like to read whatever. So why do I make TBRs? Because they're fun to make. But anyway, Lake of the Ozarks by Bill Geist. I actually really enjoyed this one. I ended up giving it 4.5 out of 5 stars. Um, it was just very, I don't know, it was interesting, and I laughed, and, you know, it was just, I don't know, it was a good time. And my favorite quote out of this one, what right does it have, death? When I meet it, I'll give it the finger, best I can do. <laughs> Isn't that great? It's great. <laughs> and then I got halfway through A Thousand Fires by Shannon Price, so I'm planning to finish this right now. So I will get it to you guys later. Chicken wings, kitty cat, chicken wings, <laughs> kitty cat. <laughs> okay people, I know it's still early in the day, it's not even five yet, um, but I'm really tired and I just don't feel good and I kind of really just don't feel like reading anymore. Well, I do want to read, but I don't want to read because, like I said, I keep falling asleep while I'm reading, so it's like, what's the point? So, anyway, I finished five books and read 300 pages of another book and probably about 10 pages of another. Let's see, two, six, eight, nine. Nine pages, okay. So, I finished um, The Candlestone, which is book two in the uh, Dragons and Hermes series by Brian Davis. This one was uh, 388 pages. I gave it three stars. So, yeah, I will most likely be unhauling the series. So it just wasn't like that, wow, you know, effect. And then I completed um, Circles of Seven, which is book three in the Dragons and Armas series by Brian Davis. Um, this one was 415 pages and I gave it three stars. Then I finished the final book in the Dragons and Armas series called Tears of the Dragon. Tears of the Dragon. Um, this one was 363 pages and I gave it three stars. Then I finished Lake of the Ozarks by Bill Geist. This one was 192 pages and I gave it 4.5 stars. Then I finished A Thousand Fires by Shannon Price and this one ended up being a two star for me. Um, it just didn't... I was honestly bored for most of it and I didn't care what happened to the characters. Um, I did like one one quote though that Jax says to um Valerie he says I'd scream to the heavens how much I care about you if you want you just tell me when that's very sweet but literally that's the only thing that I liked about the book so two stars and it was 300 pages then I read nine pages in um, House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J. Mass. Um, I really want 
to continue it. It's just, it's so big. <laughs> 799 pages. Um, and then I read the first 300 pages in The Walking Dead Compendium 1. Um, I'm really enjoying it so far. I honestly don't want to put it down. So, um, it might end up being a five star. We'll see. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm loving it. So anyway, um, see how many pages I read. Oh. So we had, we had 300, well technically 301, 300 and, yeah, 301 because I read 301 pages in The Walking Dead, plus 9 pages in Crescent City, plus 300 plus 192, 363, 415, and 388. So I read almost 2,000 pages. 1,968 pages in this video. So sweet. I thought I did pretty good. I probably, like I said, I probably would read more. If I wasn't so tired, I might end up reading a little bit later, but I kind of want to watch some YouTube, so, yeah. Anyway, that's all for this video. If you do like, if you did like it, please give me a big thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed, please click that subscribe button and click that bell notification to be notified when I post. All of my links are down below, and I will see you guys in the next video. Later. <laughs> I've got romance and nonfiction, a many. I've got horror and dystopian galore. You want fantasy? I've got plenty. But who cares? No big deal. I want more.